So here we go. Here is a little bit of a sample gameplay of Lands of Galsir. Now, I'm going to skip over the setup. I mean, that's relatively straightforward. You're going to be taking your character specific cards from the starting resources. You're also going to be taking several other things from that. So here I have the starting card and these cards, just like you can see my starting dial here for my specific character comes with several things that you just need to know. These are my skills on the right hand side. It tells you, okay, I have one ability here, one ability here, and then two in this. And these all correlate to the black dies right here. Then you have your starting gold and your tracking gold in the middle, and you have slots for each of the character cards that you can use or abilities or allies or depending on just status effects, whatever you're getting along the way. And the reason that these are important is because these allow you to substitute dice here for those specific skills. So if I have two in the purple, which is the observant, if you will, the eye, I forget the actual term, I then can substitute two of the black dice and then end up rolling this collection instead, which gives me a higher chance for getting as these dice have two on them, for example. And they also have more of these on them. So again, something to be aware of. Then obviously, if I don't have any in these other colors, I'm just not going to be using those. Now you can get skills or uh, get rewards that allow you to manipulate these around if you want. You don't have to, though, either. It doesn't force you into doing any of that. So I don't need the green or the blue. I don't need the orange. So just take all those and put those aside. Then those other three colors that might be useful, depending on what skill check I'm going to do. There you go. Oh, and you'll see that I also have two keywords here. Well, you can't really see, but I have Streetwise and Fight. All of the cards that you're going to be collecting, including even your starting card here, uh, mine is Soar in the Sky, if you will. It has flight and abilities that uh, will change it as well. Status effects like Restricted, then I can't. But I can discard this card to gain plus four movement and then return any companions without flight back to the library. So if I need to move between locations on here, and these are the locations that you're going to be seeing, this card gives me the ability to do so. So I was going to try to do dual screening, but what you're just going to have to do is bear with me when it comes to the app side of things, because I'm just going to read it, give you a little quick synopsis, and I'll tell you then what happens based on the results and what the results are. So you can kind of see, I was going to do a screen and screen. I don't think it's going to work. I think it would just confuse you too. And having it be that small screen and screen would not work either. So let's just avoid it. You just have to trust me without too many spoilers. And so when I start doing it, when I start reading it, I won't do everything. I'm only going to do a couple turns, a couple rounds. And so there are going to be spoilers, though. So if you're not interested in spoilers, I am going to be taking stuff straight from the game so that you need to know that. The other things that you need to know in terms of starting setup is that when you are choosing at the beginning where you start, how you start, you'll see that this board specifically has snow on it. And so this is to represent the winter months. And so at the beginning of the game, you roll your die and you get whatever month it is. And then it tells you which side of the board to use, either the spring, summer or the winter fall. And so if you get one of the higher numbers, for example, like if I got 11, uh, that would give me this side. And so you are also placing, it's kind of hard to see, they blend in really well because it's been really done. But you can see when I move it here, these location cards, and you can see the other side, it looks like that with the green and the grass. And these go specifically over these locations that are numbered, I think one to 12. And so then they all have unique events on them as well. And they all have unique symbols that you can be interacting with there at the various locations. The other two aspects you need to know at the beginning is, and I'm going to have this out of sight, but this is the quest board, the amount of quests that are going to be available. And there are three quests at any time that are face up. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a unique thing in this because they give you a bunch of these matching tokens. If you've seen these with how Destinies does the loot decks, if you will, or the inventories or the supplies. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this quest that says Muratu on it. I'm going to put it to the side and put one of these tokens on Muratu. And then I'm going to put the other token on the actual city of Muratu, which actually happens to be right where I am. 
And so if you go there, you can collect this quest. And so for me, I'm going to mark it just so I remember where these quests are just in that way. And that's an easy visual for you guys where my quests are as well. We'll do three others or two others. I mean, Yezdin and Hazembi. Hazembi is down here in the corner. And where, oh, where is the other one? I'm completely blanking on this one. Actually, you know what? That's kind of out of sight. Let's do a different one. Let's do a different one. Let's do Teshun instead. There you go, Teshun. So you can see it, even though that one kind of blends in. But so then those are placed on the side and anyone can get those and they are immediately refilled when somebody picks them up and you can have three quests at a time in your selection. If one forces you to get a new one, then you have to discard one. And you also are given a special uh, player specific quest and quest line that we had a little bit of a sample of with this prototype, but that one is going to be much more expanded in the actual final version, as well as I believe the number of quests in general. And so then these, I mean, they all have other sides and they tell you what to do and they're all numbered and they give you choices. And so um, no spoilers there too much. We set those to the side. The last element is this other event deck. And you'll notice that all of these icons are slightly different. You got the trees, you got a mountain, you got hills, you've got a little bit of everything. And so the event deck is, let's say you end up at one of these places and you don't want to do the numbered one. Well, depending on what day of the week it is, which is randomly assigned at the beginning of the game. So this is the event deck where you are potentially pulling from, but they also have very specific ones that where this one is Sunday, then you would do this one or the other symbols of all of the other symbols on the map that you can utilize that you're going to be pulling events from if you choose to go to those areas and not do ones that already have numbers in most of the cities you'll see here uh most of the other ones outside of cities don't and so especially when you're traveling you're only able to go so many spaces and so it's going to limit that and so you are going to be doing ones outside of that that will also be off camera just again something you need to know and then the story is basically just go just go and do your roles now i believe that they may have updated the rules since i have gotten them so i won't uh, you know, try to be exact, but I believe in my copy of the rule book, it says 12 rounds for the solo. And so for me, the biggest challenge was saying, okay, I started on a Thursday. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that's what you'd be essentially doing because after you do your move and your event slash actions, it progresses to the new day. And so for everyone that's playing, so in a solo game, that's really easy in a multiplayer game, there you go. And I guess that's what the multiple levels are for. So you can track it again. It's just remembering where you started. So I could go one or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So if I knew when I got there, I mean, again, you could take one of these little markers and set it right there. And I know when I get to that turn, for example, when that round, that is the last round, letting everyone know. Now, the other thing you can't see at the top of the board, which is just out of camera, you know, right up in here, just north of this, is the prestige side of things. And everybody has a prestige token that matches their characters. And you are going to be moving that and tracking the prestige, which is the potential of victory condition, if you will, if you are playing more competitively or just to track how well you're doing in theory from a cooperative or solo side. So there you go. You can see my little meeple right here. This is a river kingfisher and his name, her name, no gender given, Isala. And so I'm gonna leave Isala on the side so that you can see it a little bit easier because the head down is just not gonna work as well. So let's just say, let, let's just say, I'm gonna pick up this quest. Let's just do this quest so you can see an example of what the quest is. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to grab it over here. And it says, I'm looking for a person who gets on with kids and acts when faced with injustice. And this is Zephikar, the step polecat. And so on the other side, you can see a little bit of what it entails. And so it says, we offer street kids education and a warm meal for free uh, at our school, our charity school. The headmaster expelled two students after they witnessed the headmaster stealing money. Please find the kids and persuade them to testify. We need the money de back desperately. And you are going now, and this is the tricky part, is I have to go to Rienstum at the bottom there. And then when I get there, I pull that specifically number card of 291. And so I set this over here. And so for me, I need to say, okay, where am I actually at? Where do I need to go? And Rinsham is over here. It's actually made up of three cards, the biggest city on the map. And so this is where I'm at. Let's say, you know, let's just say I'm right here. And so my travel would take 
at least three movements. And I believe you only get two movements per turn. So if I wanted to go there, I would first be stuck here and have to be performing an action there. I would draw my event card. Okay. If it is Sunday, well, it's not Sunday. So I'm going to, I'm hopefully doing this right. Not screwing you guys up to begin with, but the example is there either way. Um, so I am on match my symbol. This is a grassland. And so it says right on there, grassland, go to 211. So all I'm doing while I do this is I literally just pull up the web page, I click the link for 211 from this card, and it gives me the scenario. I'm traveling through the grasslands uh, along a side of farmer's property. Mob of workers are arguing with the farmer. Brand new engine's been delivered, still strapped to the wooden pallets. You ask the group what they're yelling about. It says, this wretched machine, a dog worker barks. All of us farmhands will lose half of our work shifts because of that living. On the defensive, the farmer buffs out his chest and says, I understand, I'm sorry for you, but my farmer, and this is my, my machine I paid for. It's my choice how I run this place. Things could get messy if you take part in it. And then it says, first off, do you have a specific tag? Do you have a nibbler tag? Well, no, we know I don't. So then I click no, and then it says three options, side with the workers, side with the farmer, or stay out of this. Now, if this was a boring thing, I would say stay out of this. Personally, I don't really want to get involved. We'll put my little guy down so you can again see. But you know what? For the sake of this playthrough, let's do something. Now, um, if I'm going to side with the farmers, I feel like that's going to be more towards uh, one of my actions here that might be more of the fighting one, the one I don't really have any in, in the orange. Um, you know, the observation one might be really helpful here. So let's 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 make this interesting let's side with the workers okay clicking on it it says side with the workers how will you help the workers though and this is again where it gives you three options am i going to pay them money if i just want to cover the wages i can give them 12 gold well i only starting with five six whatever it is so um that's not the exact starting amount i think it is five actually um you can recall who might be hiring that's a hard skill check because they give you uh you know easy medium and hard for how many successes that you may need to roll and that's a hard one. And that is the green icon. And then sabotage the engine. So that is my little sneak icon here. And look at, you know what? I have one. So I would get to substitute one of these pink dies with one of my black ones and roll this. You know what? And that's the best thing because I don't have 12 gold and I can't do the hard one that's going to be here um, because hard usually requires three or more successes. Uh, medium is usually two to three. Easy is, you know, pretty much just one. And there are going to be things, if you've watched my review, that are going to help you mitigate this, that are going to give you rerolls, uh, items that you can buy from the market. So if we went to the town here, we could go buy an item that might help me or a book that might help me um, get allies along the way from quests or from, you know, random adventures that are also going to give me things like rerolls. And now I have a reroll, so I'm going to probably be needing to use it, but let's click on this. Okay, so it says reveal outcomes, but first I have to roll. So let's roll, see what I get. Dice hate me. Okay. So I have one. Now, if I had any abilities, I'd have the ability to use it here or after the second reroll. But, you know, my other die failed me. So I'm going to grab all three of these. Now, if this is a sneak one, that'd be good. But nope. Ah, crud. So I only got one. So this is a medium that I only got one on. And so now you're going to see, okay, I reveal the outcomes. It tells me zero to one, two to three, or four plus. Gives me three different outcomes to this. I click zero to one. And... It says, uh, you know, the workers scatter, the, fi the farmer basically draws a hunting musket, um, but it's too complicated for you to um, sabotage, and he sees what you're up to, and he holds you to gunpoint until uh, the patrol escorts you into their wagon and carries you off to the jail nearby. <laughs> okay, return the drawn event, the drawn event that I did, this one, back to uh, the bottom of the deck, and then move your figure to the closest settlement. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that worked out well, right? I'm in jail, but I'm in the settlement that I wanted to go to. Uh, oh, no, settlement. So settlement is... Actually, it is here. It, this is the closest one. So I'm in there then. And it gives me 51. Card 51. I don't think I've actually seen this card. 51. Imprisoned. Imprisoned means you're trapped in a small cell. Justified or not, time to bust out one way or another. You cannot pick up quests, move, trade, or assist. And as I have to do this as my next action, that's what this little lightning bolt means at the bottom, is you have to do that one next. Well, my turn's over. We go, we'll start with Thursday, whatever. Um, 
Now it's Friday, and now I have to do this thing as my next one. And then it says when you've done it, discard it. But I have to go to event 101. So interesting enough, uh, is assorted gear. And this says, preparation's key. When purchased, discard to swap either one of your skills uh, for fighting or uh, survival with a little tent guy. So uh, I already have one in the little tent guy. You know what? Let's Let's swap this. It doesn't say May, so you know what? I'm going to assume that it does. Now, now for the sake of argument, because I'm not going to get the piece out because I'm a little lazy, let's put it there, and you know what that means then. So I did that. Okay. So I had to do that as my quest. I believe then I would have to pay my four gold because that's the price in the upper left-hand corner as well. And so then my gold, let's say I started with five. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll remedy it here. And so then I'm down to one. If I can actually set this down without messing everything up all at the same time. And so then I believe that would potentially be my turn. Because I did my action, I couldn't move. And so then, all of a sudden, Saturday. So actions have consequences. I lost a whole round to that. Now, though, I am in the place I want to be for my quest. Because now I can do the quest that, if you remember, I need to get. Now I need to draw 291 because it tells me that. Oh, look! Here are the kids. Samuel and Julian. And it says they have two keywords, passion and flight. Ooh, flight, good. I could take them with me if I need to fly somewhere and use that card I showed you at the beginning. And it is uh, any space at any time, once during your turn, you may spend three money to re-roll the die. And now that is, it looks like the die for the D12, the uh, season die. And then I, if I roll a five to 12, I gain six gold. That's pretty cool. But you'll see at the bottom the other mechanism I haven't talked about. Discard in five turns. And this is really where this aspect of things comes in again. Because what I have to do is put one of these on this card to tell me which one it is. But then I take this and I go one, two, three, four, five. So when I get to that turn now, when I get the marker to here, I lose these guys. No matter what's happened, if I've completed the quest with them, or not. So it's not forcing you to do it, but there's going to have consequences if you don't go and do it in time. They're just going to leave. Now, as the next action, it says draw number 109 to go into the ruins. So now that has a little symbol next to it that is a cooperative symbol, meaning other people can join you and help you out with your said skill checks if you want to. So let's do that. Let's assume that I'm doing this correctly and that this is my next action so this is now sunday and i'm going to pull number 109 now so they're taking you on essentially what seems like a little bit of an adventure so we went and we pulled up 109 here and it says our notes this is the julian say that the rules we have came from this building here points at the corpse of a structure looks like any other ruins within the town you check out the basement there's markings that he recognizes and I've seen the same characters on the parchment from the game's rules. So this is clearly a quest for them, a, an adventure for them. Uh, there's a passage that leads deeper in the earth. And then it zigzags a whole bunch. Three paths ahead. Do you turn left? Do you go straight? Or do you go right? And it's just going. So you know what? Let's go straight. See what happens. Uh, okay. Painting forward. The two birds dash ahead and leave you in the dust. You you're arrive after them. And you arrive in a room that's uh, survived in years of neglect. They start grabbing devices that still work. And which you wonder if you should get on the looting as well. You may swap one of your skills for a perception mark. Well, I already have got two perceptions, so I don't need that. Okay, continue. Then, uh, with the room darker than night, uh, they grope for the walls for clues. I can feel the markings on the wall, says one. Uh, splendid, we must be getting closer. It seems like a game itself just trying to find these pieces. Solving the labyrinth to get our prize. How will you help them progress? Each night vision now, if you have a night vision tag on these characters, it says that you get plus one success for each one that you have. Now, we don't have any, unfortunately. That's worse. Again, if I would have been more prepared, if I would have gone to the market and tried to buy some items, that would have been more helpful. But you know what? I'm, I didn't do that. Uh, I want to put on a good show for you. Uh, first up, you can explore nearby rooms, which is a medium, which is my yellow, which well, I, I've got two in that. I That'd be okay. But I also have search the room which is also a medium. Well, I've got two in that as well. You know what? Let's take, let's do purple. I'm feeling, I'm feeling better about purple right now. And we'll get rid of the extra black die because now I can substitute two. We'll roll dice and see what happens. 
Ooh, look at that. I got the double there. And I didn't get anything else, but I could use abilities. I don't have any abilities. But I get one more reroll. So I've got two successes already. So you do get a little bit better outcome if you actually get more successes on some of these. Okay, so I got one more. So I got three. Not cheating here. I'm not like cutting this out. So, okay, I click it, search the room, reveal outcomes. I have three. So it's zero to one, two, or three plus. So great. I'm getting the best result. I see under the layers of dust, several sets of arrows guiding me to different parts of this place. Um, then I talk back to the other birds and they, they help, you know, bring me forward and they rush to the next room. See what happens. And then again, you're at a junction left, straight or right. What are you going to do? This is a long one. This is by far probably the longest one I've had. You know what? Going straight works for us last time. Let's go straight again. Again, you find old tools, constructing of locks. Um, you could take one yourself as well if you want. Uh, you may swap one of your skill marks for the thievery one. Nope, I'm good. And again, it says may. So on to the next part, you uncover a single door portal to this room. Its lock has been decayed by the uh, passage of time. Uh, any surviving components to the game will be located beyond this door. We need to get in there. Unlock the door isn't easy with the sneak or force through the door also in easy. So again, I'm going to swap these two out. I'm going to grab my black dice because I don't have either of those skills. So it really doesn't matter. But you know what? Let's unlock the door because I seem to be rolling more of those as long as I don't do that. Okay, great. I've already got two. You know what? Let's try. Let's just try and see how many we can get just in case. Okay, so still just two sneaks, thieveries, if you will. Unlock the door, reveal the outcomes. Again, zero, one, or two, or there was a three plus outcome. Uh, you wait impatiently as it takes several hours for you to unlock the door. Um, a complete copy of the game the birds have been researching. They joy joyfully cheer you while childlessly bounding around the room. Uh, it's everything that they need, they say. And I gain now to prestige. So I would move this marker up, up here that you can't see. And then I return these guys, unfortunately, to the library. If you partnered, you could get it as well. Okay, you know what? Let's let's do one more round here. We'll go to the market um, because it's one of these six spots in this city that I'm in. So market, it says right here, is 24. So I pull up 24 and you go and you can find there's stalls everywhere. Weapons and camping equipment is one. Books and apparel is another. And then miscellaneous gadgets. So depending on what you want, you know, I just did a bunch of adventures. What are you looking for? Well, you, we know I'm, I'm a little bit better in those areas and these areas. And so I will maybe want, I don't really want books and apparel and maybe hunting or gear for survival or maybe, um, you know, observant stuff. So, you know what, let's do miscellaneous gadgets and just kind of see what there's there. And it says take 201 and three random 200s from the library and place them face up. You may purchase any of these if you so choose. Return any adventures Return any items that the adventurer may have chosen. And let's say, you know, I had more money. Let's say I grab three of these. I grab a toolbox, an ear horn, and a miner's cap. And they all do different things. A blade that tinkers, reroll up to, oh, if unlock or force is used, I can reroll up to three black dice. With the ear horn, it gives me sneak, unlock, or observe. If I had to do any of those, I can reroll up to two black dice. The miner's cap, if there's a search, I get one success and reroll up to one black die. Or if there's an explore or intimidate, I can reroll. So all of these are giving me various rerolls. Well, I mean, obviously, I am sort of the sneak, unlock, observe. So the ear horn, for example, would be the best one for me. But you'll also notice that all three of these, unfortunately, are six gold. And so I would have to have gold in order to buy them first. And so that is sort of how the market works. Then you put them back. The 201 that it also says gives me... Uh, is a perception and thievery card that says when purchased, discard to swap either one of your skill marks for you know, deception or thievery. So again, if I wanted to switch over, I could. So that is a basic run through of what this looks like. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope it was informative. It'll give you a little bit of a sense of how it plays. Uh, obviously not all probably rules wise perfect, but hopefully close enough that you can get a good sense of whether or not it's right for you. So if you have any questions, again, leave them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them as much as I can. Uh, but um, thank you again for watching this. Thank you for Sammy for sending this to me and um, check it out if you're interested. Thanks.